Matthew chapter 7 verse 6 it says give not that which is holy unto the dogs neither cast your pearls before swine lest they trample them under their feet and turn again and rend you right also I'd like to give a Dabonis Elzer GMS honest to Akim and peace and bless you brothers and sisters that listen the whole full eat legs call him la yahoo bashim al shah supposed to do this video last week got caught up with work uh you know uh we uh this is pretty much a response to the whole umar johnson versus uh elder ricard the gocc which that video i think was up a couple of years ago but it had went viral again and uh pretty much show you the mindset of these pan-african jakes it's a waste of time talking to any of them niggas, man. They all heard the truth, man. But they want to cling to the gods of the Africans, which they're full of shit, man. And they don't worship any of those gods. They just saw the glam and the gold of Egypt, and they automatically just cling to that culture, man. Which Africa's over 50 different nations, man. Okay, three times the size of the United States. It's all kind of ethnic groups and different tribes, man. So why you just single out the Egyptians? And who made Egypt great? When you read the scriptures, were the Israelites. Okay? Read about Joseph, man, who saved Egypt. Seven years of famine. You see, wherever we go, because scripture says we're the salt of the earth. So we gave um, um, these nations life, man. Because they had the greatest people in captivity. But you want to cling to the gods of Egypt. And at the end of the day, at this point, all you guys done heard, the conscious clowns. You came down, you listened to the elders, you rejected it. Polite even said out of his own mouth that the elders of GMS almost persuaded him. But because of the rape thing, he wanted nothing to do with it. Right? And then you had the whole, you know, Cesario, Captain Cesario going against his different guys in that community. So they all heard, man. That's why Yahweh Shai said. Do not take what's precious and cast it to what? Dogs. He's talking to what? His people. Right? Which dogs, pigs. Pig is a well-known scavenger, man. And dogs have a lot of scavenger-like behavior as well. In fact, there's a law on that. Let me see Exodus 22. Let me see Exodus 22. There we go. Exodus 22, 31. Beautiful. It says, And he shall be holy men unto me. Neither shall he eat any flesh that is torn of beast in the field. So you're not supposed to eat something that's already dead or that was torn by beast. Okay. We're supposed to kill our food, then eat it. You see? Cook it properly as well. So you drain the blood and you cook it properly, man. You see? Because we're holy. There's laws on that. All right? It says, beast in the field, he shall cast it to the dogs. You see? Literally. But Yahweh Shai is comparing his people to dogs, man. Because this truth, I just did a video on that. Found him with my soul love. If this is a treasure in earthen vessels. Right? The scriptures come. The scripture see says wisdom is more precious than rubies or precious stones. Okay? This word is priceless, man. So Yahweh Shai said, don't take this pearl, this precious stone, and cast it before swine. Right? These wicked and these vile niggas. Right? Lest they trample them under their feet. You put a you cast a pearl to a swine or an emerald to a swine or whatever the case is. He's going to try to eat it. He don't know how precious that thing is. And then you have to go down there and wrestle him. And try to get it out of his mouth. And that's the same thing with our people. We bring them the word and they become what? They automatically reject it. Right? They become contention and then there's what? It's strife. See how shy I said at the end of the day, if you could read their spirit, but we told them the first time and they rejected, leave them alone. All right? Leave them alone, man. Matter of fact, let me get that Matthew the 10th chapter. And he said, oh, you read this first and I'll bring it out. Matthew chapter 10, verse 10. He says, Uh, Matthew chapter 10 verse 11 and into whatsoever city or town he shall enter inquire who in it is worthy okay so we don't just give this word to anybody man especially when you've been teaching for a while you can read people's spirits man 
If you see a guy come up in here and right, or he's stuck in his belief he's rooted, leave him alone. He that is filthy, let him be filthy still. Tell him just walk on down the street. And that goes for family members, that goes for friends. All right? So-called friends or old friends because <laughs> we don't deal with none of them clowns anymore. All right? So he says, and abide there till he, till he go thence. And when he come into an house, salute it. And if the house be worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it not be worthy, let your peace return to you. See? And whosoever shall not receive you, nor hear your words, when he depart out of that house or city, shake off the dust off your feet. Shake off the dust, man. And we already shook the dust of you Pan-African clowns, the Polites and the Umars and all these Jakes who believe in that philosophy. Right, they cling hold to that, man, the Sonettas. Y'all don't heard countless times that y'all the people of the book, but you like the, the gods, um, the Egyptians better. See, and y'all that same generation I got overthrown in the wilderness, man, who wanted to go back into captivity. And Egypt means what? Bondage. All right. And he said, oh, the Bible is plagiarizing. The Bible uh, comes from the walls of Egypt. <laughs> oh, man. Umar, come on, man. What the hell are you talking about, man? If you even read the Bible, you would know that's not true. The scriptures is unique. The history is unique because it's only it's dealing about the sons of God down to Abraham, down to Isaac and to Jacob and their different captivities. All right. And us jumping, going from um, captivity to captivity. Right. And then the scripture deals with what prophecy, where we will be in the last days. No Egyptian text tell our people where they're going to be in this day and time, man. No Egyptian text even deals with prophecy, man. Everything that's happening on the planet Earth right now, there's only one book people go to, and that's the Holy Scriptures. Hell, when you go to the Ten Commandments, the first commandment says, thou shall not have no other gods before me, man. All right. What, what they call monotheism, one God, one power. Egyptians, those Africans, they believed in many gods. They had a pantheon of gods, man. And then the second commandment says what? You're not supposed to have what idols or graven images. They all bow down to idols. So how is the scriptures a, a copy off of ancient Egypt? Which I want to do another video on that. Matter of fact, <laughs> one of the creation stories in Egypt I think they have three creation stories, but one of the creation stories in Egypt is that Amun-Ra masculated, um, not, um, masturbated mankind into existence. So they were sexual deviants. Okay, he ejaculated mankind into existence. One of their stories says that Horus sodomized Set. Not Horus sodomized, Set sodomized Horus, man. Yeah, and it's all kind of crazy shit the Egyptians believed in, man. All kind of bizarre beliefs. That's what I saw learn his Freemasonry from, man. So no, the Bible ain't no carbon copy, man. It's the end. The thing with matter of fact, let me get Acts thirteen fifty one. All right, so if yeah, dude ain't right, move on, man. We're not wasting time. We're not going back and forth. Yahweh shy said the best, my sheep hear my voice, and they follow the lamb whithersoever he goeth. Alright, let's Acts 13 51. It says, This is this is going into the Apostle Paul. <clears throat> and, and Barnabas and other prophets, they were going through different regions. I believe this is his um his first uh oh, missionary. He had three voyages. You know, the fourth one is when he went back to Rome as a prisoner, right? But I believe he's in Antioch at this point, and he's bringing out the scriptures to the Gentiles. And of course, the Jews, the circumcision wanted nothing to do with that. And this is what happened. Acts 13, 46. Then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and said, it was necessary that the word of the Most High should first be spoken to you, who the circumcision. But seeing he put from you and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life, Lord, we turn to the Gentiles, the scattered Israelites. For so hath the Lord commanded us, saying, I have set thee to be a light to the Gentiles, that thou shouldest be, may be for salvation unto the ends of the earth. When the Gentiles heard this, they were glad and glorified the word of the Lord, as many as were ordained to eternal life believe. And the word of the Lord was, pun was published throughout all the region. I believe they in Antioch at this point. 
But the Jews stirred up the devout and honorable women and chief men of the city and raised persecution against Paul and Barnabas and expelled them out of their coasts. But they shook the dust off their feet against them and came unto Iconium. Moving on, man. So you reject it. Spiritually, we just going to what? Shake the dust and move on, man. Okay, who, whoever's going to be sealed, they're going to be sealed. Right? That's why... And you can see in the whole interview with him and Umar, it was a waste of time, man. He's stuck in his beliefs, man. Okay, the Howard Shai said you can't put new wine in old bottles. You can't. And a lot of these dudes, you know, they have a, a, a massive following um, um, because they're very, uh, you know, very articulate in their speech. You know, right? When you go into the whole polite. Right, he used to sway people with his words, but he was full of shit. All right, and people, brothers, were saying that from the beginning. Back then, he was full of shit. Now look what. Now look, he's he's caught up into all kind of scandals. Same thing with young Pharaoh. Right, same thing with this clown Umar, man. That's why Paul said when you read the Book of Corinthians, <clears throat> there was a lot of schools of philosophy, um, different uh, philosophies in different schools. The Stoic school, I believe, the Cynic, the Platonic. There's many different philosophers at that time. And they were very good public speakers as well. But Paul said what? 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 27. But the most I have chosen the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. See? And the most I have chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty, which are us, man. Okay? He didn't call those different doctors and lawyers and those great public speakers, right? The wise men of this world. That's where we're able to confound everybody, man. We're casting out all these different strongholds and base things of the world and things which are despised have the most high chosen, man. Okay, because that shows power, man. Because we have something they do not have, and that's the Rakakwadash, the Holy Spirit. Yea, and things which are not to bring to naught things that are, are, that no flesh may glory in his presence, man, because it's a gift, man. That's why um, when you read uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 4, let me get that. The Apostle Paul said this, 1 Corinthians 2, verse 4, and that's what Jake get caught up on. Let's start with verse 1. 1 Corinthians 2, 1, and brethren, when I came to you, came not with the excellency of speech or wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of the Most High. Yeah, we speak plainly. Okay, I, for I determined not that anything among you save you, I shy Mashiach and him crucified. Okay, we don't come with that extra shit, man. We come plainly with the word of the Most High, man. Okay, the simplicity in Yahweh Shai. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. And my speech, my preaching, that's what he said, even though I may be rude in speech, but not in knowledge. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of the power. <laughs> like Umar Johnson, man. Like we said, you know, they're very articulate. And, and putting their words together, but they're full of shit, man. They have no substance of what they're talking about, man. And they have no real plan or vision, right? Talking about, yeah, we're going to build. You niggas been building. He still ain't built that school yet. And he's been talking that for how many years? It don't take that long to build a school, man. You took that money, you ran with it. No different than a Christian church. All right? So the scripture says what? The Apostle Paul said, and in my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words, man, or that million dollar vocabulary of man's wisdom. Because at the end of the day, scripture says the wisdom of this world is foolishness with the most high. He don't care about that, man. Because why none of you guys fear him? That's what the most high is concerned with. Do you fear him or not, man? That's why I think there's another precept. We'll probably close this out soon. I just had to quickly. I suppose I did on. I'm supposed to have done this last week, but um, get time to address it now. We get this. Second Corinthians, I believe it's chapter one, verse twelve. Yeah, here we go. Second Corinthians, chapter one, verse twelve. He said, "For I rejoice in is this the testimony of our conscience, that in simplicity and godly sincerity, not with fleshly wisdom." Because a lot of these dudes, they boast in their degrees, 
right? They went to this university and that university. That's fleshly wisdom. Even back then, a lot of men were boasting in what? They pedigree. All right. I'll go back to this line and that line. So Paul talked about what? Endless genealogies. This thing is based off what? The spirit, man. Not with fleshly wisdom, but by the grace of the Most High. We had had our conversation in the world and more abundantly toward you word. All right. So this thing is what is based in simplicity of Yahweh Shai, not fleshly wisdom. Man. We're not looking for a massive following, all right, or fame. We're not attention seeking. We're not attention whores, okay? We're gathering the elect, the lost sheep. That is it, man. And for the rest of you characters who can't get with it, who despise the word of the Most High, well, there's a scripture for you too, Proverbs 13, 13. So we're not wasting our time with most of you niggas out there, man. Keep believing what you want to believe. I'm going to read a precept after this to close this out. Proverbs 13, 13. Whoso despiseth the word shall be destroyed. That's it. But he that feareth the commandment shall be rewarded. I don't want to write We are of the elect. But if you despise this word, you reject this, this gospel or the good news, you will be destroyed, man. This is life and death. Because you're not despising us, you're despising Yahweh, Yahweh Shai. All right? You're coming up against him. This is his word, man. This is his program. So you're fighting against the invisible power, and you're going to lose that war. And when all these hells start coming upon you, Jakes, that's in these different philosophies in the Christian church and Islam, or you believe in America, or you're an atheist, okay? You believe in that dollar. This is the most I said. I'm going to close it out with this. Judges chapter 10, verse 14. It says. Jerem Judges 10, 13. Yet have forsaken me and served other gods. You and know, you, you and your Egyptian nonsense. Wherefore I would deliver you no more. Go and cry unto the gods which have chosen. Let me read again. Go and cry unto the gods which ye have chosen. Let them deliver you in the time of your tribulation. Man. So when all hell break loose. And that's how the most high humble everybody, man. Everybody's proud right now. But when all hell break loose, everybody remembers a higher power, man. But the most high gonna say, nah, through his men. Nah, go back to them Egyptian gods, man. Go back to Allah. Go back to white Jesus, man. Nah, go back to trusting in that dollar. Go back to trusting your master, Aisha, man. Let them deliver you, man. All right. So with that, I'm going to say, call him liar. How about Shimmy? I'll shy. Shalom.